Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 78 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about sending emails in ASP.NET using SMTP server settings from web.config file. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 75, 76 and 77 of this video series. In part 77 of this video series, we discuss about sending emails using ASP.NET. All the SMTP server settings were actually configured in code. In this session, we will discuss about specifying these settings in web.config file. Let's quickly recap what we have seen in the previous session. Now before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch the previous sessions of this video series because this is a continuation to that. Now here I have webform1.aspx. On this I have this grid view control. When this webform1 loads up, we are creating an instance of the data set object and then invoking the read XML method which tries to read the contents of countries.xml and load that data into the data set which in turn is used as the data source for the grid view control and finally we invoke the data bind method. Now, we don't have this countries.xml file within this project, so obviously we get a file not found exception. And since that exception is not handled anywhere on this page, it's going to get ruled up all the way till the application level. And at the application level within global.asax file, we have application underscore error event handler, which retrieves the exception using server.getLostError, and then we pass that exception to the log method of the logger class. And this log method of the logger class will actually log that exception to the database table and to the event viewer. And then it also sends a notification email to the development team or the administrator. In the previous session, we have seen how to send that email. So if you look at the logger class, which is present in this logger file, logger.cs. So I have this log method, which is a static method. It's taking in the exception object. And what we are doing here, we are retrieving the exception type, message, and the stack trace for all the exceptions, you know, for all the inner exceptions, if any. And then we are actually logging that exception. Once we log the exception, we are actually sending an email. Okay? And if you look at, you know, the send email method, this is what is the send email method. And we have discussed about this in a great detail in the previous session. And actually, there are two simple steps to send an email. First, you compose your mail message object. And next, you specify your SMTP client credentials. That's it. So when you're composing your mail message, you specify your from address to address, and then the subject and body. So that's your mail message. And then we specify the SMTP client credentials. So SMTP client, you specify the SMTP client, uh, you know, the SMTP server name or IP address here. Since we are using Google, I mean Gmail to send our uh, emails, I'm going to use the Google's SMTP mail server, smtp.gmail.com. By the way, SMTP stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. And then SMTP um, Gmail's SMTP server uses port number 587. And then obviously we'll have to specify the username and password, which we did here using the credentials property of the SMTP client object. Okay. And then Gmail uses SSL, secure socket layer. So that's why, look at that, look at the URL. It uses HTTPS. So we have to set enable SSL to true. So all these SMTP settings here are specified in code. Now, it's also possible to specify these settings in web.config file. Now, you might be thinking, what is the advantage of storing these settings in web.config file over code? In fact, this is an interview question as well. The advantage is tomorrow, if the SMTP settings has to change, then all you have to change is your web.config file. The advantage here is that when you change web.config file, you don't have to recompile and redeploy your application. Obviously, it's going to save a lot of time and effort. But if it's specified in the code, you'll have to change your code. Once you change your code, you'll have to recompile and redeploy that. Okay, so that's why anytime you have some settings within your application, it's always a preferred approach to have those settings in some kind of a configuration file. Could be web.config or could be an XML file. Now remember, when web.config, you know, changes, the application automatically restarts. So it's even better if you store them in some kind of an XML file. Okay, so that when that XML file changes, the, the web application doesn't restart. Okay, but again, it depends on, on the requirements of your project. But anyhow, uh, 
the bottom line is that storing the configuration settings in a configuration file is much better than storing them in the code. Okay, and finally we send the email using the send method. Now let's see how to specify these SMTP client settings within web.config file. So if you look at the slide here, now I use system.net element here. Now if you look at the mail message and SMTP class, client class, both of these classes are actually present in system.net.mail namespace. Okay, so maybe if you look at the name the element name here within web.config file it's system.net and within that we have mail settings and within mail settings SMTP simple mail transfer protocol delivery method is equal to network and then we specify the network credentials network the host name port number username password and since Gmail uses SSL enable SSL is equal to true so it's as simple as that so let's quickly specify these settings within web.config file so let's go to web.config file and system.net uh, you specify that directly underneath uh, the configuration element so system.net and here you specify mail settings because we want to send an email and within mail settings we specify SMTP and delivery method is going to be network and we specify the network credentials so network first thing is the host name so host is equal to smtp.gmail.com and port number so gmail's smtp server uses port number 587 and we need to specify username so I'm gonna specify that as my username goodvenkert at gmail.com and you specify the password okay so I'm going to specify that as test and since Gmail uses SSL I'm going to specify enable SSL is equal to true okay so since we have specified these settings within web.config file uh, I don't have to have these settings anymore within my code so let's go to our code now within logger class so I don't have to have these credentials anymore so SMTP client credentials I can get rid of that I can also get rid of this enable SSL true and I don't even have to specify the SMTP server name and the port number okay so all we are doing here is SMTP client you know we're creating an instance of that and we are sending the mail message okay so what is going to happen when we actually run this okay it prepares this mail message object and then it looks at this SMTP client alright I don't have the settings specified within code so obviously it's going to look at web.config file okay alright these settings are specified here it will read the settings from here and then sends an email um, you know to whomever we have specified so here if you look at the logger class we are actually asking it to send uh, an email from me to myself okay and obviously you will you will find the email since I'm sending it to myself you know this is an example email that I have sent it to myself so if you look at this I have sent from this email address to this email address okay now this code you know you cannot send unlimited number of emails from Gmail programmatically like this I think they have set some limit there are only uh, so many number of emails that you can send using Gmail's SMTP so it's not available for a full commercial purpose so you can only send a specific number of emails using Gmail's SMTP server so since the SMTP server settings are now configured in web.config file in code all we have to do is create an instance of the mail message class specify the from and to email address subject and body so we prepare the um, you know mail message object as usual but then when we create an instance of the SMTP client and then send the email using send method that said we don't have to specify the host port number username and password and of course since Gmail uses SSL we also have to set enable SSL and all that is specified within web.config file obviously the advantage of that is that whenever the SMTP settings changes we only have to change our web.config file we don't have to change code um, bec and because of that we don't have to recompile and redeploy our 
application which is going to save a lot amount of time and effort we don't even have to test the application because it's just going to be the settings change on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day